Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So this episode, you guys are gonna see what I've been threatening I've been gonna do for a long time, and that's take this really poor ventilating Yoder, the loaded Wichita, and we're gonna monster stack it with the help of my cousin, Nathan, Marine veteran, Nathan, say hi to the channel. What's going on guys? So what are we gonna do today? We made a uh, we made a smoker uh, smoke stack. Nathan prefabricated some parts here, um, basically a kit, right? This is a uh, plenum kit, retrofit kit for a Yoder smoker. I would say this is the prototype of something that may be available to a select few if you ever want to hook up with Nathan. <laughs> and you're a, a professional fabricator welder. In yeah, the Greater Southern California area, and uh, and now if you guys are familiar with uh, Aaron Franklin's pits, that's a plenum. The way the smokestack exits, and we're going to take this poorly ventilating Yoder Wichita and put this massive five-inch inner diameter smokestack on it, and uh, and and really do some cooking here, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we'll give you an update, I'll roll some B-roll, and uh, sit back and enjoy the show. All right guys, so one of the critical things that uh, Nathan's doing right now is we're scribing out the, uh, what would you call that in the welding industry? Just layout. Layout, okay. Um, so what we're doing here, we're using the cooking surface and one of these shell brackets as the reference for level. And then we're making sure that the opening we're gonna cut for the kit is uh, square and level, and plumb and all that. Um, so he's using, what is that, soapstone or something? Soapstone action. And uh, then we're gonna scribe it. And by the way, this big hole from the old stack, you know, we're gonna, cut a, a, a blank out of this piece of steel that we're gonna end up cutting out and just put it right there to fill up that hole and uh, be done done with it um, and then we're gonna cut this out and, uh, and get welding now the plan I have for the diffuser is to not use it as a diffuser um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting it off probably at that second set of holes um, and I'm still gonna use it in the way Yoder designed it to be mounted just tucked up under that opening there so that the friction uh, and the weight of it will hold it in place uh, some other people uh, have welded those back in but I'm not gonna go with a permanent solution yet um, I'm just gonna start with that and uh, cook some ribs on it when we're done and see how that that works out so Okay guys, you might be wondering what to do with that uh, little four inch uh, exhaust stack, three and a half inch actually hole that's left there. Um, instead of cutting out your own circle and hoping that you are seeing straight, just take the rain cover and take off that, uh, whatever that is, the rivet, and uh, you got a perfectly sized piece and with just a little bit of grinding, voila. And uh, Nathan, thanks for that great idea, man. I never would have thought about that. You guys have seen me on the previous video. I'll leave a link up here uh, to install in this $5 easy to uh, make probe port uh, with a little rubber grommet in there. But you know, it's kind of a, takes three steps to put your probes through there. So until I figure out whether I'm gonna use this or not in the future, I'm just gonna keep that simple little hole there um, to throw probes through 
um, and uh, see how it works out for me. You know, it's going to be easy to plug up if I ever decide to do it. Uh, this is this is quarter inch plate, quarter inch T1 plate. Um, so we're going to put a quarter inch bevel on, on every touching surface except for the top and the bottom plate. So we're going to have a quarter inch bevel here that's going to create like a J groove and a quarter inch bevel here and a quarter inch bevel on every plate surface that wraps around this and that's going to create a larger V groove and the reason why we're doing that so you have a quarter inch bevel, bevel on this plate quarter inch bevel on this plate you have a half inch weld and that way we're doing same size weld or greater than the material that we're using so that's going to just improve its strength overall uh, penetration strength and overall appearance of the weld it'll lay nice and flat yep so for you guys that are kind of concerned that we're hanging an awful lot of weight on the end of that uh, smoker this is just going to add to its strength and rigidity and longevity plus those welds i've seen nathan's welds are going to look beautiful and if you guys are kind of concerned about the whole weight don't forget there's this firebox hanging off the side over here that's going to be probably as heavy as the uh, plenum is going to be uh, and it's not really held on by as much as uh, what we're going to do here so so rest assured this thing is going to be strong so oh and uh, here's that bevel that nathan's talking about uh, you can hope you can see that but it's just going to ensure that that weld is strong uh, so for you guys that want to ever tackle one of these uh, fabricators kit kind of well you do. guys that was a marathon welding session Nathan kicked ass I played a supporting role I kind of cleaned up and you know maybe handed him something once in a while did a little grinding but for the most part uh, Nathan thank you very much man. You're welcome. Um, so this prototype uh, we're calling it the NM 01p and um, it's the prototype and I get it I'm going to be testing it out in some future videos, so I'm going to be showing you guys 
um, my very first cook, maybe my second cook. Today is just all about the build. Next video, I'll maybe show you guys actually um, the uh, smoker in action. But let me show you what we did. This is five inch inner diameter. And as you can see here, we got a, we got a flapper. Nice little custom touch uh, from Nathan. So thank you very much, Nathan. Um, so what kind of steel is this? T1. Uh, T1. So it's T1 and it's quarter inch. Yep. And what's the significance with the T1 uh, steel? High heat, high strength. High heat, high strength? Yeah. And uh, so, which is great for a collector. It, it's probably overkill, but for the prototype and for me, uh, you know, we. Uh, I didn't even know he was using it, so thank you very much again, Nathan. That was a, a surprise. So that would be great metal for a firebox. So maybe another video. Um, so we got eight inch rise here in the manifold. Um, and of course, five inch inner diameter here. The stack that comes stock on this Yoder Loaded Wichita is only a little more than three and a half inches inner diameter, it, which is weak. It's one of the reasons these things just don't have a lot of good airflow. Um, so with this added airflow plus a collector at great level not only is it going to increase the size of the cooking chamber itself but it's going to promote airflow across the primary cooking surface which is the lower grate and it's not going to hit a wall and come back and do weird things and, and then go into a little stack that comes out the top instead it's going to continue going not slowing down and that's the key a lot of people cook over here on the left side because they're afraid of this hot spot on the right side. But what happens is that air coming out is going to hit that wall, bounce back, and, and it's just going to do strange things. So um, in my theory, I think it's just going to keep going into this manifold and then go out, heat rises, instead of the Yoder design where it's coming out of the top side and then it's got to make a 90 degree turn. So, so I think for that right there, it's going to be a really efficient smoker okay so the diffuser plate i basically cut at the first row of the smallest uh holes and you know the rest of the diffuser plate well i'm going to just use it as a maybe a machining table um, i might even go back about another six inches or so but i'm going to keep this size diffuser plate for now and my theory is that it's going to allow the heat to rise more and catch that airflow and completely flow a little bit more evenly over the top and bottom of piece of uh, whatever meat that I'm cooking with here and um, on its way out the uh, manifold there so as you guys can see we actually reused the handle that originally came off the sidewall of the smoker that Yoder put on there and not only did we reuse it we actually mounted it in a much better way you can see how Nathan uh, tucked it up underneath the manifold and then laid a bead on both sides Wrapping that sucker up and so when you lift it and you can look, look at that, look how level that is with the same room When you lift it now, you're actually putting a little bit more pressure where it belongs, you know um, And distributing that weight a little bit more efficiently so it shouldn't bend on you as quick um, There could be other ways of doing this, but hey if, if you can reuse some of the original metal uh, you know, that's green, I guess, right? So we built a green smoker, okay? Just happens to be gray. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it here. I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, trial run of installing this uh, smoker collector uh, kit here that uh, in the future, Nathan is going to be uh, further refining the kit, fabbing up some new parts, maybe make a couple versions of this, but we're still in the development stage, I would say. We're still going to test this out and really see how well it is on this Yoder load of Wichita. But the principles remain the same. It's all about airflow. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. See you later.